Well, I have to say, I think I'm following uh, Dr. Knight because I can speak fast and I can get through all of these options. So when he was talking about Chris Hatfield, I was thinking, actually, Dr. Knight and people like Leo, they are true champions and heroes in terms of palliative care. So what I'm here to talk to, to you tonight is about the different kinds of options. And I'm incredibly excited to be here because there's a lot of interest on this topic. And I've been involved now in the community end of health care, or so home care, for the past 20 years. And we've seen remarkable changes in that time, not only in technology and best practice, but in our community demographics, our health care needs, and in particular, the realization that for our health care system to truly work for patients, all of the players, from the beginning to the end of the journey, and it, indeed from the start of life until the end, need to work together. One of the most rewarding changes has been the focus on palliative care and increasing options for patients. That same energy that's been there for a long time on curative and treatment is now there on assisting clients to die. A few years ago, I would have been doing a very short presentation on options. Uh, there was very limited services. Now, there's a number of options and there's a Northeast Hospice Palliative Care Network that's working to improve those options all the time. And that network is made up of home, hospital, and hospice providers and stakeholders. And their goal now is to work with the, our LIN to improve palliative care across the Northeast. It seems odd to say that, that palliative care or uh, end of life care is a growing issue because they say there's only two sure things in life but it's a very sensitive topic and one that we've been avoiding for a very long time. We cannot afford to ignore this any longer. Dying with dignity and comfort and peace is something we all want. The network, which I've been a member of for eight years, as has Dr. Knight and uh, Leo, we began working to really start deciding or um, looking at all of the different services that were out there because there's a lot. There's a lot of different things, but it's how they all work together. It's like a big puzzle. How do you put the puzzle together without the framework? So the, the network is really about bringing all of the different providers and stories together and really looking at what is truly needed and trying to build on those existing uh, services and programs and to really, truly build a system. So we see this picture. I don't want you to have to worry about looking at it too close, but this is something that we did a few years ago at the network where we sat down and said, okay, here's the different venues of care, hospital, complex, continuing care, long-term care home, and then we were very excited to add the little hospice there because that's an important element. And then you look at all of those things at the top. Those are all the different services that are available through a number of different providers, organizations, agencies. Some are funded through ministry, others are funded through local programs or agencies. It's incredible the number of uh, services that are out there. But how do we make it work together? So I guess it was probably the end of 2011, beginning of 2012. Provincially, a bunch of stakeholders, 80, met with the ministry and sat down to say, what kind of model of palliative care do we want? And they came up with a new model that looks more at focusing services around patient and families and less about agencies and lines. The new, the new model had to really support the fact that there are different needs at different times. So as you can see, very simple picture, that you have very primary needs, then it moves to intermediate and complex and can move back and forth. So we had to work at creating something that would support clients as they move back and forth. So in the community, we've got care providers, CCAC, traditional old home care program, community sports services, volunteers. We have hospital outpatient and outreach inpatient programs, long-term care homes, and residential hospice, and now new out outreach programs. CCAC, and I always kind of refer it back to the home care because that's what most people are familiar with. Care coordination, therapies, and nursing, those traditional kinds of services that everyone has, um, is used to in, over the years. We also provide support services, so personal supports now become a very, very important service um, for a lot of our, our clients. We also provide short-term medical equipment, uh, rental and medical supply provision. 
But a lot of that, and so lots of you have told your stories, it didn't really meet the needs. There wasn't really a lot of service or it wasn't available in a certain way. So really now what's happening with home care is there's a lot of initiatives to enhance chronic disease management and end-of-life care. So enhanced personal care, nursing and therapy services to support patients with end-of-life end of care. Generally, the enhanced services will start kicking in around the last 90 days. Here's some of the new programs and initiatives that are really kind of targeted to supporting different, um, different populations. So there's the new rapid response and telehome care nursing program. So the, these programs work with clients with life-threatening illness or chronic illness and help in, uh, transition home from hospital uh, and also work at providing nursing through a, a, a telephone visiting service. One of the ones that we're very excited about is our new palliative nurse practitioner program that works very closely with, with our hospice and our specialized uh, palliative care coordinating, coordination team. And many of them are here tonight, so we may have to ask them questions later. Enhanced palliative training for staff. As we talked, you know, we have lots of contracted providers that provide a number of uh, try to meet the needs of all sorts of different populations, but how do we better support the needs of dying patients? Dr. Knight outlined how the, the needs can be very different. So enhanced palliative training for staff. Integrated service planning pathways and guidelines. And all that means is how do we hand off? If a client comes to hospital, how do we work together to bring the client home? How do we support the client now to move to hospice or to move to the inpatient unit for pain and symptom management? There's also provision of therapy services, medical equipment and supplies for patients at Maison Valet. Warm Hearts is another very key partner, and I know there's a number of the volunteers here tonight. They provide interdisciplinary education and the volunteer visiting program and the bereavement follow-up program. They've been in place now since 1989. We can't stress enough how, what an important program and services those are to our clients uh, in the community. It's an accredited organization, provides a screening process and intensive training for volunteers. And there's a very exciting new initiative on ongoing integration with Maison Valet Hospice. So now we're having two amazing partners who provide amazing service now working together to better support our patients. Now, Maison Valet Hospice. This is a gem for us, and I don't know if people realize this, we're one of only two communities in Northeast Ontario that have a hospice, a freestanding residential hospice. And they now provide that specialized service through a new shared care team that was just one of our new initiatives this year from Merlin for patients with complex needs. They provide that specialized nursing, that supportive care, and that piece that Dr. Knight talked about was that physician RN on call, that 24-7 backup. So nurses in the home or if patients are having issues, then there's that availability uh, and support. They also pro provide consultation and resource to all of our providers and to our care coordinators, and they're going to be working on the advanced care planning strategy. HSN provides a number of very, very important palliative services for us in the community, specialized individual and family counseling, palliative and end-of-life care, for First Nations, Inuit, and Métis fam families, and social work assistance with practical and financial matters, and specialized nutritional counseling, and physiotherapy for symptom management and grief counseling. Another really important element is their sy symptom management clinic, which helps with control of pain and symptom other symptoms of cancer. That's a very important uh, program in terms of allowing clients to receive service and still be at home and in the community. So now when a client, when our clients, our patients, that's our new terminology, we're all even, we're even all collaborating on what we call the people that we serve. So we're now, everyone is patients. So one of the, the big uh, important elements is that when, our, when a patient is at home and is, uh, staying at home is not an option, or there's been a change in condition that requires them now to look at an alternate option. One that we have is that residential hospice, and it's amazing. It's in a beautiful setting on Bethany Lake, and it really does provide that home-like environment to support our dying patients. 
The clients receive the psychosocial spiritual care program and the visiting hospice uh, volunteers are also at the on-site. Admission criteria, and I don't know why there's 310 CCAC there, it shouldn't be there. Uh, for the patient criteria, over the age of 16, end-stage medical condition with a life expectancy of three months or less, priority is given to patients who live alone and cannot manage at home alone, or a hospital inpatient unable to return home and wish, wish to uh, have end-of-life care at the hospice, and has symptoms that can be managed by the residential staff. HSN has an inpatient palliative care uh, program that focuses on pain and symptom management that cannot be provided in the community setting. And these are open to any palliative client whose end-of-life care is less than uh, four weeks or a community patient with a, care with a care period of less than three weeks. This is really important. There's often clients that will move back and forth from community into hospital, back home. So as you can see, we're all working together. We all have pieces, and now we're putting the pieces together. So what can I tell you in conclusion? Is there lots of improvements to be made? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we, every day, there's a different story that tells us there's something else we need to work on. Am I confident that we're gonna get there and that we're working together to do it? Absolutely. The people that are involved in palliative care are one of the most committed, um, feisty bunch ever. And we're always looking for different opportunities. So I know I spoke very fast. Uh, so one of the things I do want to highlight with this is that there's a new, um, there's a new uh, 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 website that you can go to, www.northeasthealthline.ca, that provides very comprehensive information on a variety of services. And as part of our network, one of the things we're going to be working on is also taking out those, um, having a special page just to pull out palliative services so it'll be a very quick uh, easy reference. Or you can actually call 310-2222 and ask for information and referral.